Hi, this is Jimmy McTiernan from The Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to insert timelines into your Notion tables and databases. Notion recently released the Timeline View, which allows you to view your tasks in a timeline and see how they fold the time. Think of it as like a Gantt chart. That's basically what it looks like. And it's really cool because now it makes Notion even more viable as a project management tool. Now, before we get started, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really does help out my channel. If you want to see more of my videos, please click the subscribe button. This channel is all about tutorials on various productivity apps like Notion, Todoist, Things, Google Docs, Google Suite, pretty much every application out there. We do extensive tutorials on each of them. So check out my channel for more videos on what I cover. And obviously, if you like what you see, please click the subscribe button. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks. Okay, let's get started. So as you can see, I have a, a sample table here, some dates in it. I will, the, the first thing you should know about the timeline feature is that the timeline feature works best when you have functions or tasks that span a range of dates. So in this case, if you look here, you can see I have some tasks in this column right here. And then I have corresponding date ranges here for completing them. I also have a couple where they finish on one day. They start and finish on one day. The way you create a date range in Notion to create a date column, just like you would if you just had a single date, click on it. And then down here where it says end date, when you enable that, that enables the secondary box. Conversely, if you have to have a single date, you can see where it's not clicked. You just have the one date, which is the actual start date. So end, end date. Here, going back, you can see I have this tick mark here for the end date, and as a result, I have a start date on the 13th for this task and or this process and this end date of the 17th. And I've done that throughout. Adding a timeline view happens the same exact way you do for any other view of a database. You click on the, you hover over the top of your table or database and click this add a view button. You have all the traditional ones, table, board, calendar, list, and gallery like you had before. But now, as you can see with this new indicator that says new, there's a timeline view. So we're going to, first what we're going to do is we're going to give this view a name, which we're going to call project timeline view. And then we're going to click on timeline. Make sure it's checked to know that you're enabling timeline. And hit create. And as you can see, I now have a timeline view of my task. Now notice it actually mixes up the order of my tasks here in terms of when they're going to happen. But let's, we'll fix that in a second. But let's scroll here. You can see my, my timelines is here. And one of the first things you're going to want to do is determine your interval for what you're looking at, as well as the order that you want to see them in. So first thing we're going to do is look at the intervals. If you come over here to where it says month with the drop down, that's the default metric that they use for determining how they lay out the timeline. If you click that, you'll have several options here. Hours, days, weeks, bi-weekly, month, quarter, and year. The one I find that, for least from, I like to use the bi-week one, so I'm going to click the bi-week. And that kind of makes it a little cleaner for me, uh, a little longer. I can see the multiple days here. But notice it's still out of order, which I really don't like. So the easiest way to fix that is to come up here to the ellipses click it and come down here to sort. Now once you click sort, you're going to bring up the sorting uh, dialog box and you'll be able to add a sort. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your dates and ascending. Now show from top, it'll start from at the top will be the earliest thing and then each task underneath it will be the subsequent thing from a time perspective. Just click off of it to make it go away. And as you can see, it's much more of a waterfall style now, which is what you traditionally see in a Gantt chart. You want that to sort of start from earliest to latest. So this is really cool. Now, one of the cool things you can actually do is you can come here, click on properties, and you have this new, uh, well, this has always been here to show a table and you see which things you show in your table. So one of the things I might wanna show is I might want to show on the table side the dates next to it and then the actual timeline. 
I can also show, I can actually have the entire table if I want, but that's sort of, and then I can click off that real quick. And you can see I have my entire table and then my timeline right next to it. But that's kind of, that's kind of visually messy. So what we're going to do is we'll go back in, click the properties again, and we're just going to turn this off and this off. You know, actually, let's just do maybe tags. So now click off. You can see that from my, my table perspective, I have both my tasks and my uh, tags in here. If I don't want to see them at all, I can just click hide table and now it just literally will show me the timeline. So this could be handy if you want to have a separate timeline view. Think of it as a linked database of that. And I'll actually, I actually have a video on linked databases. I'll link above uh, so you know you how to set them up. Basically, they're a custom view of an existing database. So you can have multiple timelines depending on a variety of factors if your table gets big enough. So that's really cool. But let's show the table again. And let's by clicking the button again, and that expands it out. So we'll leave that there. And let's say for, but let's say I want to see more information in the actual timeline itself. I can actually click the ellipses, go back to properties. And as you saw in the show a table, I also have a show in timeline. So let's say I just want to see my owners. And click that, click off. And now you notice I have a little icon here uh, of my face because I'm on a personal plan. So I made myself the owner of every item because that was the only choice I really had. And as I scroll here, you'll see all those th things. I can also add my tags. If I wanted to like maybe have my tags in here as well, I can come up here, click properties. And also, let's say I wanted to have my tags. And click off. I can have my tags in there as well. Now that could get messy because you can see like it'll, it could extend. If it's a short here, like you should create initial proposal. There's not enough space. It's the only way I can extend it is by extending the dates for it. It doesn't really cover it perfectly. So I, that's why I really try to keep this simple. So I'm actually going to go back in properties. And maybe I'll just turn this off and just put the head in there. It still overlaps here, but you can see for other ones it doesn't. And so that's pretty cool. And let's change our thing to monthly. And you can see it gets much tighter because the days get tighter. Now let's say I wanted to change my time. So let's say I wanted my initial proposal. I needed a couple extra days. I can actually move this out by just sliding it. And then, so now instead of going, before it was 13th to the 17th, I can make it to the 19th. And now if I come over here, I can show you it actually occurs here. If I can actually come up here and say properties, and let's show my dates. And now you can see in my date section, when I adjusted it here, it automatically adjusts it in the table because it's pulling, it's literally the same data. So that's pretty cool. And now if I wanted to move this, I can slide this over and maybe slide this out a little bit. And it also, as you saw here, now adjusted here as well. So that's how the timeline works. I hope this video was enjoyable and helpful to you. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos, or if, if you're new to Notion, you should really check out my Beginner's Guide to Notion. I'm going to link it up above. It is a extensive guide to teaching you everything, assuming you know nothing about Notion, teaches you everything you need to know to get started with Notion. And by the end of it, you'll be very comfortable in Notion. And then you can watch some of these supplemental videos like the timeline video, like the, you just watch to learn on some of the new features and functions. And if you're interested in that, please click the subscribe button. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.